We continue our Oscars journey, but this time, raise your fists, because it's gonna be a nice, nice, smooth ride. Judas and the Black Messiah stars Lakeith Stanfield as Bill O'Neill, an FBI informant who infiltrates the Black Panther Party to take down the chairman, Fred Hampton. Now let me tell you this, I have seen plenty of movies that do with the civil rights movement, or like that kind of era, you know, when like black people were trying to fight for equal rights. And let me just say, my gosh, this one has never touched me like the other ones have before. It's just so exhilarating, so powerful. Oh my gosh. This was the movie that needed to be made today. We dive deep into the Black Panther movement, and there are many contributions for the black community during a time when it was honestly just pure hell. Taking place after the death of MLK, so many black people were in desperate need of a new leader. So who did they turn to? Revolutionary Fred Hampton, a young 21 year old man who every time he opens his mouth, you just couldn't help but listen. Daniel Kaluuya delivered a truly, truly Oscar worthy performance playing Fred Hampton. Like, wow, he embodied this revolutionary, and at the same time, it was like, man, every time I heard this guy speak, I wanted to join the movement. That's how amazing he was. He was just, had such a, like, you know, calm, you know, not good spoken demeanor. It was like, once you listen to him, you couldn't have a wanting to hear more. He managed to give us a historical figure that not many people know about. I mean, in school we grew up knowing about MLK, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, but never about like Fred Hampton or like anyone else who like pretty much their role their role within the civil rights movement was with an iron fist. And it was just amazing and like man, we were missing a lot out in history. This film really brought us into the party and shows what they were truly about. Community service, uniting those even different than they are, and of course, giving the black community hope that a change was truly coming. I was so intrigued how Hampton managed to bring so many people together because they all, by reminding them they all had a common enemy, the government. When forming the Rainbow Coalition, he recruited Hispanics, even white rednecks into his movement. Why? Because Despite their many differences, they were still the same because they were all being oppressed. They were all victims of a corrupt society who pretty much sell nothing about garbage. So I imagine not just to get an entertaining movie, but also an intro to moments that are forgotten in our US history. Like, it's always been like, oh, MLK died and so did racism. No, it's still going strong, even to this day. This is a world where racism is still at its highest, and those who want to do something about it are still looked on as threats. Now, there are moments when the power of words can have prices to pay. Like, when Fred Hampton was in prison, people were desperate in need of a leader. I mean, he was like a Messiah-type character who, like, basically, we, we cannot function without his guidance. So when he was gone, it was like, what are we going to do now? There was no more hope, just a thirst for violence. I mean, from police shootouts to executing those who you see as, as your enemy. Oh, wow, it was such a dark time that like, oh my gosh. When words can no, long, no longer matter, action and violence take its place. So who's the main villain of this movie? The FBI. Yes, they managed to portray J. Edgar Hoover as such a sinister racist. Oh my gosh. And that just from a great performance on Martin Sheen's part. But that conversation he had with Roy Mitchell, the FBI agent in charge of the investigation played by Jesse Plemons, was just so terrifying. Asking him, like, when your baby girl grows up, are you going to let her date a black guy? It was like, oh my gosh. It was, he was baiting Mitchell, and Mitchell had no, no choice but to fall into the trap because there was no way out. Like, Hoover's already painted Fred Hampton as a, as a terror threat, and even had him arrested over ice cream. Like, oh my gosh. I know Hoover was all about, like, taking down taking down the bad guys but in this essence he was kind of a bad guy himself and that further proves that that hit on Hampton while he was asleep was an assassination which not get persecuted until years later and as for Roy Mitchell I just want to say that he's the perfect representation of a centrist he's not good but he's neither bad like he views the Black Panthers as like the KKK they all use violence to promote terror so in a way he's just the guy who's trying to do his job and he sees the, uh, the wrong in both sides. And in a way, that's kind of like how we are. Either we're on this side or we're on that side. It's never, there's never a, a center point. 
which the way I see it, a lot of people should be. But in a way, there are times when we gotta pick which side we're on. But the real main character, both protagonist and antagonist, is Bill O'Neill, played by Lakeith Stanfield in such a fantastic performance. He's a young black criminal who agrees to be the FBI informed because he wants to avoid jail time. He's been stealing all these cars. And man, did Stanfield deliver. Like, there were so many times where, like, I'm cheering for this guy. Like, okay, maybe he's gonna redeem himself. But then I'm like, my gosh, talk about, you know, betraying your own. Like, his story became a thriller because he was anxious about being discovered. Like, here upon hearing, like, uh, the tale that, like, oh, that old last informant that we found, yeah, we boy, we boy with him with hot water and then killed him. Or the whole, like, mo tense moment when, like, one of the black parents asked him, you're a car thief, right? This is a nice car. Hot wire. Prove you stole it. And, my gosh, you can feel the tensity right there because you're thinking, like, okay, this guy's stolen cars by betraying to be FBI agents with a fake badge and just taking the keys. Does he even know how to hot wire a car? But it just goes to show you that not many people believe in the movement. O'Neill, like many of us, was just in it for himself. He didn't care about civil rights and all that stuff, the fight for freedom. No, no, he didn't care. He just, to him, it was like, oh, I'm just a, I'm just one man trying to survive this dark world. That's all that mattered to him. Now, I was hoping for a redemption arc for him. However, we didn't get it. Why? Because, you know, in his story, he just didn't want to. No, he got his money, and that's that. He didn't reveal himself until like that PBS documentary where he said like, okay, he told the story and that's where like, you know, he became known as the FBI informant who took down Fred Hampton. And of course, he ended up committing suicide, possibly from guilt over all the harm he's caused for simply betraying his own, his own brother. Now, I don't know how much he got paid for this job. But that's exactly how much he felt that his own black brothers and sisters were worth in order to betray them like that. Well, Judas got his piece of silver, and now he's shamelessly hanging from that tree. So, Oscar worthy? Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh, this movie was powerful. It was just so gut-wrenching as well. Like, this is a movie that we need. It's so relevant to this day. Like, this better win the Oscar. That is for sure. Racism is still at its highest, and black people are still taking the hit. This was not just reality, it was a cry for help. I mean, if things haven't changed 50 years back then, are we gonna win the same things 50 years in the future? And each actor killed their performance. Stanfield was pretty good, but Kaluuya destroyed that role. He was Fred Hampton. He didn't just play a role. It was just so awesome, and like, I want to hear him speak more. In fact, I wanted to hear, I wanted to see him lead a new movement. That's just how powerful he was. So if you want to witness an exhilarating historical account of an America that is still waving an upside down flag, then this is the movie for you. So my final rating is going to be 9.8 pigs out of 10 fake FBI badges. So, Jews and the Black Messiah, We'll see you at the Oscars. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a like if you did, subscribe, and join the crew. And we'll see you next time for another awesome review. Also, be sure to follow the Instagram page at CineGuySteven for more fun reviews. That is at CineGuySteven. I'll see you there. This is Steven Angulo signing off, and I am a revolutionary.